Hey up Woodlanders, what another stunning morning. So our firewood van has been and took a full load of firewood, which is another great one, feeling less pressured this week. And then the big pole order, that's going out Wednesday as well. So hopefully we can eat by the weekend, which will be awesome. The clouds are fantastic, we might have to get a time lapse in a minute. But today, because we've finished cutting here at Rossiston, my jobs today are dressing some rods for hedge lane stakes, I've got to dress some rods for bean poles, I've got to extract the rest of the bean poles out, and the forecast a dry week. So of course, if you're in the woodland industry, a dry week and dry ground means extraction time. Get you out of the sun for a minute. And so that's all the hedge lane stakes done out of Rosserston. We've got 220. And then I think the next job for me is try and extract all the bean poles. I won't get a chance to dress them today, but if we get them out to the ride side, then I know that's all the bean poles extracted. Now word has it on the street that next week might be frosty. As I said last week, never trust the weather man. So we'll wait and see on that one. I'm waffling again, aren't I? But if it does come frosty next week, that would be pretty awesome actually. Because next week, while I've got lots of little jobs I'm meant to be doing, a couple of days extraction next week would be superb. That is me all done for today. All the bean poles extracted. We might be in for a right good sunset tonight, so I'll try and capture that. I'll see you in the morning. Tomorrow it's all about fixing handrails, so I'll just do a little bit of a time lapse for that because it's not really woodland stuff, is it? So that's tomorrow's job, and then Wednesday we're on another gardening job. See you bright and early in the morning. I just popped up to our woodland and you can see where those vans got stuck last week trying to get out because they ventured just a little bit too far into our patch. Give you a sneak peek into our fencing contractors. Interesting use of wire. Hmm. Well, I know for a fact that that's been cut off with a chainsaw and the bottom was put in with postcrete. 
if you've anybody's ever done anything with stock fencing for animals and farming you don't use concrete they've got a turning post that's made out of a four inch stake and i don't want to be too critical because well it's not my fence and it's now at least it keeps the stock out and it might just stop the animals leaning over and grazing but yes we can see here classic cement on the bottom of the post you know that post that I smacked my head on down there? Well, they've that one, and I can sort of understand why they've basically put the post on our side rather than that side because of where the old post was that snapped off. Well, if it was me, I would have negotiated six inches onto their own side, but no. Good afternoon. This morning on a little gardening job, so I've done that, and William's den have been, picked up his poles, the trailer was just colossal, massive trailer, anyway, he's took all the poles, blew his tyre up for him, uh, so they're all happy, turns out I was the cheapest guy for supplying the poles, which really doesn't surprise me, but they're all happy, I've been paid, so we're all good. And then yesterday we did the handrail job at the father-in-law's, so that's all sorted as well. This afternoon I'm just doing a little video about 500 subscribers, and this is the 500, five, and this is the, and this is the 500 subscriber giveaway. And then I've got a rook of computer stuff I've got to do and I've got to sort out Vodafone because they're messing me about. I must admit it's a little bit quiet on the hazel panel front. For the whole of January I've not made any hazel panels. Which for the last three years I've always been, order books are full. I've been sort of trying to organise my time and fell at the same time and that's really quite a challenge. But this January I've pretty well spent the whole of the time in the coppice. So at the moment I've got one inquiry, Reuben, um, I've got to go and have a look at his. And I've had a couple of other inquiries, but they've been trying to uh, trying to ask for the best price. Well, to be honest, the best price is the price I give because I can't, there's no discount. That didn't happen. And I think this is a pretty well a telltale sign of the fact that people's finances are getting a little bit tight. Because let's face it, a hazel panel is a luxury item and you can't eat it. I'm sure the orders will come in, but I think it will be a little bit later this year. So anyway, I'm going to busy myself this afternoon and I will see you um, in the morning. I wanted to increase the side height of my trailer so that I can carry two cubic metres of firewood green rather than going through all the regulations. So I've just been doing that. Good afternoon. This afternoon's job I've been 
preparing the tractor ready for tractor day tomorrow. I've got an imp and go and get the log trailer. That's why I'm up the woodlands just now. So I've got the log trolley to fetch. I've got my truncator cross cut thing that I clamped to the side of the trailer. I've got to pick that up. I went to have a look at what the fencing contractors had done down the bottom end. And, well, I ain't being negative. Well, I don't, I love it, but I, I ate it. I'll tell you the long story, but then I'll cut it out in the edits. He just gets it off my chest. 10 years ago when we bought, Bob, the next door neighbor says, oh, just strain off my corner post, it'll be fine, because that's where the marker was. I was like, no, I don't want to use your post, because that's not fair, you've paid your money, and I don't want my fence to rely on your fence and vice versa. So I says, I'll put my own post in. Anyway, last year, which is one of the first wood logs I ever did, I put a brand new chestnut post in. All was well, happy days. And then what's happened is the fencing contractors have got to Bob's old post. Bob doesn't live there anymore, it's another lady. And clearly their post has snapped off as well. So what they've done is just done a car crash bodgy and scarper method of attaching all of their different lots of wire onto my post. You're supposed to use godfathers or struts as I call them, which is an angled triangulation of the strut so that when you put tension on the wire it doesn't start yanking your post over. Well. They've not done that either on either side. So all of it's relying on how deep my post is and I'm not happy about that. And honestly, if they'd done a nice job, it would be okay. They've done a terrible job of it. So when my post eventually rots, that means that I've got to repair their fence as well as, so I'm, you know how it is. Like I say, I just, I don't like calling other people's work because they say they've done the best and all this and that, but they definitely were not fencing contractors putting stuff in with postcrete using other people's fencing and making the right pig's ear of the wire is not fencing and they've charged top dollar i've heard the report of what they've charged it's premium money but it seems like i've been the one that's come off worse again wow well, how's that happen how's that happen anyway thanks for listening i don't know what good it did but I think the bottom line is I'm going to have to take it on the chin again and put a post in, put a chestnut post in and then attach their wire to a brand new chestnut post and I've done with that and just take it that that's it, that's my contribution. Yeah, the other thing is by attaching the wire to my post, again, they've gained about another four inches of ground. I'm like, that's not very fair because I know four inches of ground in the big scheme of things is not much we're not talking about house boundaries here but it's the principle of it that's what i'm trying to get at it's the principle of oh we use his post because well it don't cost us any money then and he can pay for it and it's all on his and i'm, I'm just happy with that I, I don't like that attitude of i mean by all means ring me and say can we attach it to your post but don't just assume that that's okay and then leave it in a bit of a dog's dinner Anyway, rant over. Sorry about that. My little log trolley. I blew the tyre up and all was well. And then it went down within about an hour. It kind of scuppered me day really. So what I did, I went and bought some of that slime you buy for the tyres. And I thought, I'll be all right. I'll put some slime in it. So I put some slime in it. And next morning, it was still fully inflated. And then... A couple of three days later, it's still fully inflated. Oh, that's it. Top job. That's that's done it. That. And I've just come to it, even though I've not used it. And we are flat, totally flat. The slime has failed. This afternoon is not going well, is it? So I'm going to pump it up and hope it gets me through tomorrow. But I think it's going to have to be bite the bullet and buy a new tyre. That was a waste of 12 quid, wasn't it? Took air now, so we'll see. If it's flat in the morning, we'll know it's a bit of a fail again. I'll see you bright and early in the morning for some more tractor action. And it's not freezing, so I'm gonna freeze my fingers off and get frostbite again. It's almost like spring. I've noticed the crocuses coming up. 
The snowdrops are coming up, which is about right, to be honest. I've noticed it yesterday on a gardening job, a couple of daffodils popping up. So we're off this morning on our jollies. Some extracting today at Rossiston. I've got the rather nervous journey of driving to Rossiston on the tractor. Bear with me while we risk life and limb on the dangerous Derbyshire roads. This morning I came to my log trolley and it was flat again. It's very disappointing. That means it's gone flat in 12 hours. So it did make me wonder, is it the valve? So I've took the valve out, which was a faff because I couldn't find a valve remover. So I had to get two screwdrivers and get the valve out. Put a different valve in from another tie that I knew was holding up off of another implement. Put that valve in, put some air in, and we're gonna try it. I'll try not to talk too much today. It's just all about getting extraction done. Apart from an aeroplane, we have peace. Let's see how we get on this afternoon. Just finished doing that uh, trailer full of logs. Took nearly two and a half hours. I wasn't expecting that. I thought I'd be doing that an hour and a half and to be honest when I factor in my time fuel and the faff is going to deliver it all that really wasn't worth it at all. I sort of used a lot of the scrawny stuff so the stuff I got for charcoal destination so it's a lot of this one inch two inch sort of size but I don't honestly think I'll be doing that again. And that concludes another woodlock. Yes! So thanks ever so much for watching this one. If you've managed to endure to the end, well done. And as always, if you're able to, try and enjoy some woodland paradise again this weekend or into next week. And I'll see you bright and early on the next woodlock. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Dressing some rods for um, <laughs> to death, and I think it was a bit jumping out. Oh.